You know, in my book, I wrote the headline for Columbia was best of both worlds, question mark. In other words, it seemed to me that at this point, Columbia is producing these uh, standard, satisfying, reliable coffees. And at the same time, there's just a uh, tremendous range of uh, change happening with the boutique or smaller exporters and producers. And this uh, tasting so far really illustrates that. Delicious. I'm pouring number five. Okay, well, I am also pouring number five. All right. Well, I'm getting a, a nut and maybe a slightly darker roast in this, uh, in the nose yeah, here. Too. And a kind of a rather characterless uh, aroma yeah this is the it, to me the standard issue aroma though I, if i were in a restaurant and i smelled this i would say oh colombian coffee is this uh, is this a pre-ground coffee i uh i'm sorry uh senator i never comment on pending investigations okay <laughs> 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 My get it's a it's rather subdued, and I'm wondering whether that it's uh, was pre ground rather than whole bean. But it could be that the roast is uh, is sitting on the coffee a little bit, not a excessively dark roast, but just a little darker. Or yeah, not profiled well. Well, it has sweetness. It tastes like coffee. It doesn't, uh, it's not imbalanced excessively. It's, a, it's just a little flat, frankly. The, uh, it's not bitter, uh, excessively bitter, but it, uh, there's a sort of a, to the degree that uh, bitterness is the absence of sweetness, you could say it's bitter. It doesn't have a lot of sweetness or, or uh, brightness. It's a coffee nut, to me nut dominated coffee, I mean in terms of, of a flavor aroma notes. or wood, uh, which is not a bad thing, of course, uh, a kind of aromatic wood. Uh, everything from sandalwood to cedar can add enormously to, a, to the pleasure of a coffee, but I'm getting a little bit of a bored taste in this one, like Maybe uh, go into a lumber yard, an area where the the where they saw, where they um, it, you know it's not freshly cut. It's sort of been sitting in the yard for a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, this is not a thrilling cup. I I, I wouldn't turn it away if I needed a cup in the morning though. What's your take on this coffee, uh, Kevin? Interesting to get your notes. Predominant uh, note that I would 100% agree with, it's flatter. It's just not, it's a two-dimensional rather than three-dimensional coffee. It's real simple. I mean, it's Colombian coffee, and it's not It's not bad. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I, I, as far as, uh, I'm not tasting a lot of obvious defects to me. It's what it lacks compared to any other coffee we've had today. Instantly to the bottom of the list for me. It's interesting to compare it to two, which... Uh, mm. No, I can do that. Very satisfying, even now that it's cooled down. Very satisfying yeah. balance and smoothness in uh, two. 
And here, it's a flatness. There's a little bit of a, I don't want to be too hard on it, but it's a little bit of a black hole of flavor. There's something in the middle there that's uh, removing vitality from the coffee, removing uh, complexity, removing uh, has low acidity, low acidity uh, in a negative sense. I mean, it, uh, the, yeah. it, it to the degree that uh, viewers will be able to relate positively to the term acidity, which is a positive term in coffee, it lacks that brightness, that tart uh, lift, sweet tart yeah. lift. Yeah. So we yeah, dumped on this poor baby enough. Well, what is it? <laughs> It is Don Francisco. I wanted to try a canned coffee because I felt, first of all, there's a, there's a market, uh, and I'm in it sometimes. Oh, I know I'm going to lose cred in our community, but you know I don't I don't always take a, a grinder, believe it or not, with me, especially with the uh, TSA now uh, when I when I travel everywhere. And I mean, it's just you know I want to be able to get a, a can of coffee sometimes and make coffee with it. And this is, it's a, it's, it's got a lot of things going for it. It's a hundred percent Arabica. It's actually got Juan Valdez on the, on the cover. <laughs> Maybe it's because of an old can of coffee. I don't know. I got it, uh, but I got it from a reliable uh, source, all-purpose grind. I'm not sure what that means. Um, well, Kevin, remember when I said that I thought this is a pre-ground coffee? Yeah, you. Do I you get credit it. for that? Absolutely, you do. Okay. I, I, because I, I think to... this is one of the, the primary issues with this coffee. Had it been whole yeah. bean and freshly ground, it, I think we would have found a lot of life to it, and it would have uh, probably have, uh, have competed well with number one and number two. I mean, it just is a yeah. flatness. I mean, there's just, as I said, a black hole was maybe not the right uh, uh, metaphor, but uh, maybe a blanket sitting on the, on the flavor. Yeah. Yeah, the Gavinia family, a marvelous family of, uh, of Cuban immigrants who uh, produce uh, great coffee but this is not one of them, probably because it's canned. And uh, you see, if you look at the label too, this is a traditional uh, way of labeling Supremo. Colombia. They're yeah. calling Supremo, of course, is a grade of, of Colombia coffee that is only large beans. So it's uh, a size grade, really. Yeah, size not grade. Not taste grade. And, uh, well, I think that Theoretically, it might be better than Excelso, which is the next grade down. But, it, but it's a typical way of labeling uh, mm -hmm. generic Colombia coffees. Uh, so it, this uses all of the. Uh, but at any rate, it's too bad. I mean, it's. Uh, I would love to taste a whole bean. It would probably show much better. Uh, Kevin, if we had had a can of um, Folgers Classic blend next to this one. This one would oh, leap out yeah, this would blow in it its away. superiority. Yeah. In a sense, uh, it's unfair to, because uh, as a canned pre-ground coffee, it's uh, superior to the, uh, the standard uh, big three uh, uh, Robusta blends. But uh, certainly in this, in this company, the company of these other Columbia coffees. So I think from a consumer perspective, the lesson here is buy whole bean and grind it. And, uh, yeah. and then if you get a Columbia, it's going to be good. I mean, here the only one that, that really is lacking uh, for me as a coffee is this last one, and I don't think it has anything to do with Colombia. I think it has to do with the fact that it was pre-ground and lost its uh, vitality. It, it's, yeah, so it's a packaging issue. 
largely. Yeah, yeah packing. Yeah. yeah, freshness and packaging. And it could be that the uh, the essential bean, the plant material, was similar to the first two we tasted, or maybe not. But uh, we don't know because you can't tell. <laughs> it's too well, it's too flattened by the uh, by the pre grinding. All yeah. right. Let me, let me say the virtues about the coffee to me are that, again, I didn't taste what I would call a lot of defects in it. I, I, I that 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 I, that I know tr travel quite well in uh, in cans because I've had plenty of canned coffee during my life. And for instance, we uh, we had uh, Maxwell House uh, in a previous tasting, and uh, this has none of the that kind of off quality that, that bitter, I tasted. Bitter yeah. bitterness. Yeah, this yeah. is not yeah. bitter. None of right. That. No. But and it's and so I mean this was very and I did just as a as a test I uh, I uh, opened this can yesterday and I, it was difficult because I had to find a way to store it so that it would remain fresh overnight but I uh, fresh as it was and uh, I I did uh, give it to somebody else and uh, to test it and I had a cup with them and I thought it was I thought not next to these coffees, but I thought it tasted pretty good. So I don't think it's a. I think that from a from a taster's point of view, et cetera, I think they did a reasonable job. The at least a reasonable job. The problem is that a lot of the great work they did was is the staling yeah. that they had to do to get it to stay in the can. Yeah, so. to stay in the can, the coffee has to be. To it, it's called degassing, but it's in fact pre-staling and uh yeah that's, that's the way exactly it goes right. 